What's good everybody, it's your boy Rebel, here with a long-awaited tutorial. So a lot of you guys have asked me to do a WAN 2.2 image to video GGUF model tutorial and workflow. And I have a bit of a special treat for you guys today because not only am I going to give you the WAN 2.2 image to video GGUF, but I'm going to give you a Flux Dev GGUF to use with the image to video model. So kind of like a little mini content creator startup if you want to call it that. I am going to give you a little bit of a treat though because not a lot of people are talking about this. So this is called interpolation. And interpolation is multiplying the frames for added smoothness. And this is massive for content creation. So we will be getting into that a little bit later um, in the same video. So if you guys are ready to get started, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Without further ado, let's get right into it. First, what you're going to need to do is go to all of the links in the description that I've provided, and you're going to need to download all of these custom models, uh, safe tensors, VAEs, everything that you need to plug into this okay now to download all of your models safe tensors vaes everything we're going to click all of the links in the description the first being for the one 2.2 image to video model guff um i use the quant 5 um it, i can get away with it on my pc you may be able to you may not I have eight gigabytes of VRAM, so you be the judge. I also do have 16 gigabytes of regular uh, RAM. So that could be playing a role, I'm not sure. You may need to go with a Quant 4 or a Quant 3. That's kind of gonna be more so on you. But you need a high noise and a low noise with the same name. That is very crucial because they're both going to go into separate loaders. Uh, so get those two models. We also need our WAN 2.2 text encoder and VAE. You will get the XXL FP8 scaled safe tensor and the WAN 2.1 VAE. This only works for the 14B GGUF, only works with the 2.1 VAE. You cannot use the 2.2, that is for the 5B. And I'll be making a video on this later, but... There's a lot of kinks that need to be taken out of this model. Uh, okay, so you're going to need those two. And then you're going to grab your Light X2V Image to Video LoRa's. So these are distilled rank LoRa's. For 8 gigabytes of RAM, I started on the rank 32, but I have since moved up to the 64. Um, it's just a little bit better fidelity, a little bit better quality, um, better adherence. So... You may need to get this if you have 8 gigabytes with 8 gigabytes of regular RAM too. If you have 16, you may be able to pull this off if you close and optimize your PC. Just close applications and only run ComfyUI. You can get this going. And it's pretty efficient. So after that, you're going to need your Flux CreaDev GGUF. Um, I went with the Quant 8. It, I was able to get it to run. Um, that's just me personally. You may need a Quant 4 or a Quant 5, depending on how much RAM you have in VRAM. Or you need this as well, Clip. This is a very important. It's very important. This goes in your Clip. And you will need a text encoder based off of whatever quantized model you chose. So if you chose the... Q4KM, you want the Q4KM text encoder. Last but not least, you will grab the Flux Chanel AE dot safe tensor. It's Flux Chanel, but it, it is uh, cohesive for both models, so you can just hit this download right here and you will get all of your files. Now, as far as where the models go, this model will go into your UNET folder. It will not go in a diffusion model or a checkpoint folder. This will always go in your UNET because it is a GGUF. All GGUFs go in your UNET. So your other GGUF for Flux Crea will go in there as well. 
your text encoder goes in your text encoder folder. Your VAE goes in your VAE folder. Now remember, I will have all of this in the description, so if you get lost or you don't know what you're doing or where to put it, it will be listed just like this in the description with the link underneath it. Uh, your LORAs go in your LORA folder. AE file, this file, will go in your VAE. As far as clip, yeah. So your clip.l or clip underscore l in your, te your T5 text encoder for whatever model you chose will go in the clip folder. It will not go in text encoder. Now, when you've downloaded all of your models and save tensors and all of your files and you've put them in their respective folders, you will restart Comfy UI and you will drag and drop your workflows into the UI. You will get a bunch of missing red nodes and you will have to install your missing nodes by searching for the GGUF and searching for the frame interpolation in the custom nodes manager. And you can install those and then restart Comfy UI and re-drag and drop in the workflows and it should go away and you should have all of this. When you are done with that and you have the workflow set up, you do need to switch out your models because this may not be available. It may have base models that you already have downloaded. So just, you know, make sure this is all looking exactly the way that it should. So the workflow should immediately copy into your Comfy UI UI. And if it doesn't, this is about what it should look like. You'll have two UNet loaders, one running the high noise and one running the low noise for whichever specific model you chose. I run the Q5 models. Um, I, I found that I'm able to get away with that if you render at 480p. Um, so you need the LoRa model that we downloaded. You need two of those. One at the strength of 3.0, one at the strength of 1.5. You need two model sampling nodes, both set with a model shift of eight. Those are going to run to uh, each of your K samplers, which are advanced K samplers. Um, you're going to have a WAN image to video node. Your text prompting nodes are going to be right here um, one positive one negative you will feed those in to your one image to video and then feed those into your K samplers you will have a load clip node with the FP8 scaled safe tensor that we downloaded and that will feed into your text prompting which will feed into the rest of your setup Coming over here, we have the VAE loader, which is the WAN 2.1 VAE we downloaded, which will plug into the decoder. The decoder plugs into the interpolation setup that we're gonna talk about in a minute, which then feeds into the video combine node. Now, as far as the interpolation goes, I've found that, you know, multiplying by two or three is honestly necessary for smooth renders and it boosts the quality and visual fidelity in my opinion tenfold um if you're not doing this you need to be doing this if you don't know how to do this i will do this on another day otherwise the vae decode would go straight into your save video node or video combine node um, which it looks like this and it's on bypass because we're going to be comparing the difference between. So in the flux dev links provided in the description, you will have links to all of this setup. This is a very basic workflow. I mean, it's, it's literally very basic workflow. You can do this easily. I will put it in the description in the, in the link. So you can copy it yourself if you'd like to, but there really is no need. It's super simple to set up.
That being said, this is the setup for your Flux Dev GGuf. It's along the same lines as a basic image, text to image render, um, except for you have your unit and your dual clip loader here, and you have Flux Guidance. But we will run a image and we will then plug it into WAN 2.2 and I will show you guys what the interpolated video looks like after. So let's get a prompt. So we have typed in perplexity. Give me a flux dev prompt I can use for an image to video generation in WAN 2.2. And we will let AI do the job here just as a prime example. So we will plug that in here and we will run this. I'm gonna pause the video because I really do have eight gigabytes of RAM and I don't wanna, you know, burn out my GPU trying to record this. So I will be right back. Okay, so our image is done. It says it took 75 seconds, so a little bit over a minute. Um, and here's what we got. It's very nice, rendered in at 1024 by 1024. So we will take this image and we will plug it into WAN 2.2, get a prompt from Perplexity for the new image. And we will see what it gives us. I'm not even gonna question it, I'm just gonna plug it in. And I will be right back after this renders. Okay, so the render finished and it took about 656 seconds. Now, like I did say, I have eight gigabytes of VRAM. This is a poor man's setup, but it works. Now, that being said, here is a good context behind why interpolation is important. So this is a regular five second render at 24 frames per second. It still looks good, right? But this is five seconds interpolated two times, so multiplied by two to get 48 frames. And I have turned the playback speed to times two just to showcase the uh, smoothness. So I'll play this one twice, so you can see. So this is non-interpolated, and this is interpolated. Let's get to the actual video. Now, the one thing I've noticed about interpolating is it can make a sped up clip, which most animation on a GGUF seems to be sped up. I'm not sure why. I'll look into that and I'll give you guys more info behind it. But for some reason, I'm noticing that it slows everything down and just makes it look almost like natural if that makes sense like it's supposed to, to look from its original point if it was maybe 3d animation i guess if you want to say that but this just looks a little unnatural like it's sped up you know so you would want to slow that down but this seems to work Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you're able to get some type of content produced with this on a low VRAM setup. If you have any questions, concerns, or just want to leave a comment to tell me how I did, uh, go ahead and post it in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the page out a lot. Um, with that being said, I'm going to get up out of here. Y'all have a good day.